My name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we are going to cover vague interview questions. These questions definitely fall in the bucket of open-ended interview questions, and I can tell you at Google, these are make or break questions. If they seem easy, that's the intent. The intent is that they're a little bit tricky and you just need to dive in a little bit more. And so five examples might be, how do you determine risk? Create a new program only knowing the desired result. How do you measure success? One we've covered before. Launch a new product. And how do you identify customers' needs? These would be just some examples of some vague questions. And remember, they actually likely will be position specific. So these are not gonna be commonly asked vague questions like tell me about yourself. They're gonna be a little bit more role related, but still super vague. And stay tuned till the end. I'm gonna go ahead and screen share and show you how to work your way through one of these example questions. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. If you like my overall content, please subscribe. So item one, restate the question. Yes, this is something we've touched on many times, but vague interview questions are likely going to be less than 10 words. And classically, they're about five, six, or seven words. And so restating vague questions, it might do a couple of things. It might help your brain get that connectivity, and it definitely might trigger your interviewer to give you a little bit more detail or information and narrowing that focus can be super critical to your success. Item two, write it down. Of all the interview questions, no interview question is more important to write down than a vague one. And the reason is simple. You're trying to make this connection between the auditory and visual. And if you write it down, the actual words you need to focus on are going to jump off the page, circle them, focus on them, and that will really, really help you have success. Item number three, another concept we've talked about before is take your time. And so in no other question is it more important to slow down and organize your thoughts. Getting a few of your organized thoughts onto paper will just ultimately save you time. And you don't want to dive into a vague question. You will go down an unwieldy path and you will not have the success you want. Take those 30 seconds, take those minute, take that minute even longer. It will help. Item four, question the words. This is absolutely the most critical of all the items I'll talk about today. Taking the words at face value is a critical mistake. The words need to be explored, and this exploration is going to open many doors and ultimately demonstrate to your interviewer two critical items, your ability to problem solve and your ability to navigate ambiguity. So a quick example before we go into our longer example, let's go back into the example of how do you measure success. When you think about measure, you would think, what are we trying to measure? Usage, adoption, money earned, time saved. And in correlation, if you look at success, you would want to know, is success determined by delivering it on time, meeting or exceeding revenue targets, level of quality, happy customer, happy internal stakeholders, etc. And this is just scratching the surface, but this is a quick example of how you'd want to dive in. Item five, solve. I think one of the other challenges with vague questions is we think about questioning the question, but then we don't ultimately solve for it. And so at some point, you are going to have to make some assumptions. And remember, think role specific. So if you know the role is going to focus on existing customers, then that will be really the focus of how you would measure success. You'd be thinking about existing customers and how you can increase adoption, increase usage, right? Hit the timeline that they're looking for, et cetera. But you ultimately do have to question and then solve. And then lastly, item six, follow-up questions, specific follow-up questions, ideally two to three is perfect. This tends to be a real struggle for my clients you want to focus on questions where you were, weren't really able to go in depth and on subjects that you know really well. Item seven, example, 
Let's go ahead and solve. So now on the screen share, let's cover the question, how do you identify customer needs? Start by restating always, and then the initial questions that we're gonna focus on are three words, identify, customer, and needs. These are the three items I would want to explore. Before I could identify needs, first I would need to know more about the customer. So are they a new or existing customer? If they're new, have I had any interaction with them before? Text, email, phone? Have I ever shared any information with them? Maybe are they utilizing a free trial of my services? Did they fill out a customer interest survey, etc.? If they're existing, first place I want to go is historical data that I can reference. How long have they been a customer? When was the last time if they had any service at all? And when was the last time I had any form of communication with them? So if they're new or existing, some of the items I'm going to want to focus on are what are some of their desired outcomes and goals, short-term, long-term? Are they small, medium, or a large customer? What is their industry? Are they growing, stable, or actually in a declining business? And what is their primary reason for utilizing our services? Based on this information with the customer, then I would want to flip and identify. And ideally, whether they're new or existing, I would want to identify needs by a face-to-face -face meeting, but if not face-to-face, -face, definitely video. I would want to ask them great questions and come up with a plan. And then if we flip over to needs, I would want to identify needs based on history, budget, timeline, resources, risk, scope and scale, stakeholders, and working towards that shared vision. Now I want you to pause for a second and at this point ask your interviewer, as I think about this role, it would be important for me to solve focusing on supporting an external existing customer because that's the focus of the position. Would you like me to solve for this specific case? Remember, at this point you've already solved, but it's possible they might want you to go more in depth and ideally you would to show how you would solve for this specific role. So if we're to flip over and specify a little bit more and get to this solve piece. So we're thinking about a role again that's supporting existing external customers. First, I would want to know more about the history of the relationship. So successes, challenges, history pertaining to competitors, the industry, and how this might help me guide the customer. Second, focusing on past, current, and future goals and the timeline to achieve these customer goals, whether they're small or they're big. Third, I would want to focus on their growth and utilization. So this is a number of items. How have they utilized our services in the past? And what would they want to focus on in the future? Can I figure out additional services we can offer for them to utilize? And then in correlation with growth and utilization, I would want to make sure we were assessing risk and just understanding the overall scope and scale of the customer. Fourth, I would want to understand if there were any changes to the budget. Are they wanting to shift the budget in any way? And my main focus would always be to increase the budget, but only if it makes sense for my customer at this time, given their financial needs. Fifth, I would want to understand resourcing. Does the customer have the right people in place? And this would include the stakeholders component and subject matter experts on both sides. Also, do they have the right tools in place and do we have the right tools to support them? Sixth and the last item we spoke about before, which is a shared vision. I would want to work hard to create a shared vision with the customer. Based on the other five items, does that shared vision we create ultimately support their desired goals, objectives, and outcomes? Lastly, follow-up questions. Can I provide more detail into how I look at historical data to help identify customer needs? I only briefly mentioned stakeholders. Can I tell you more about the importance of how to identify customer needs through stakeholder relationships? Is there anything else specific I can clarify for you? In closing, the biggest takeaway I want you to have from this video is to explore the words. Don't take these words at face value. Really dig in and you'll have great success. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much.